I still have not made the uh, hashtag sports potpourri episode where it's just complete chaos and mayhem. Nothing going on at all. Can't spell potpourri without P-O-T. True story, Marcel Darius. Yeah, well, he's probably going to be a free agent. Ha! Come on back! Yeah, I don't think so. Nope. People will see that sailor hat in a bar on Chippewa and just turn around and walk out. <laughs> see two guys eating in a car click that subscribe button I think uh, I saw a post on uh, social media the other day that was claiming insider updates about Shady being gone right I mean you look at the money you look at the production you look at the draft they've got tons of picks pick up, you pick up running backs anywhere in the middle there True. maybe Shady's gone a couple things for Think about you save money even if you can't find a trade partner. Right. Yeah, just by cutting them, you're you're saving money in. Okay. It would be very difficult to find a trade partner. Yeah. With the third highest, third uh, highest paid running back in the league, that's going to be thirty one. Yeah. Because we have talked about on the, that last, on the last year of his deal. Last year of his deal. It's tough because the formula that has been going on since Demarco Murray. Dallas is that you draft a guy, run him into literally run him into the ground for yeah. four years. Try to get him cheap after that because everyone has seen the amount of touches that he has. You try to sign him for to another three four year deal when he's twenty six. Mm -hmm. Then when he's twenty nine, he becomes a Chris Ivory, mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know, a spell back, uh, and then that's been the formula. So even if his contract wasn't what it is, I think it'd be very difficult to trade McCoy to try to get some value for him because he's thirty. He's gonna be thirty-one years old. Well, and this is kind of why I was frustrated when the Bills traded for McCoy was because they traded for him and then gave him a contract extension. And these last two years are the product of that contract extension. So I mean, it's frustrating to see the flame out possibly happening. I mean, you could say a lot of things about the team last year. You know, the offensive line was bad. You had a rookie quarterback. Yet there were a lot of things that went bad. But the fact that McCoy wasn't on the field all that much was also a problem, right? I, I still am a major proponent of the fact that he was hurt literally all season, which hurt his play out the field. That's funny. I think Josh Allen was hurt all season. Right. <laughs> The thing about McCoy is the question you have to ask yourself is this. Is he the type of player that would restructure his contract? No way. To take less money? No. Why would he restructure? I mean, he might, he might sign an extension, but nobody in their right mind signed an extension right now. And the Bills have so much cap space, you wouldn't do it anyway. Yeah. You know, that, I'm just saying. I mean, McCoy's cap hit isn't the third highest in the league once you remove the salary bonus. Once you remove the signing bonus. Right? So when you look uh -huh. at McCoy's salary, the Bills are going to have to take money on the chin just to trade him. He then becomes reasonably affordable, I suppose, for a veteran court, Six for a veteran mil? running back. Six mil for one year. There's no commitment. I mean, maybe, but that's you, McCoy becomes a handcuff to an injury. You're bringing you're bringing him you're bringing him in when you lose somebody in training camp. Like that's, it's not a draft day trade. Well, that's the thing that got me about McCoy was last year at the trade deadline there were about four or five suitors that could have used his talent. Mm -hmm. And the Bills at that point were a team that were like, listen, we're just trying to see what we got for next year. Yeah. Well, and, you know, the truth remains that if McCoy goes and puts up another first five, six weeks like he did this season, he's going to he's gonna have zero. You won't be able to get rid of him. You'll have to cut him if you want him off the team because literally nobody will take him. To see two seasons back-to-back -back, uh, with the way that the, the front of 2018 went, no way. Nobody's going to want to touch him. And it's a shame because I – like McCoy, but there's some there's some big question marks there right now. And I think when you're looking at this team, McCoy's from a previous regime. Yes. One of the last few from the previous regime. Yeah. He's 31. You know, it's it's time to start looking at younger options. And do they have the money to spend in free agency? Yep. Do they have the draft picks to draft a running back? Yep. 
the formula is there to say this underperforming player is not going to be here. Not to mention the fact that their, their running back room is probably the oldest in the league. You have two 31-year-old running backs and a 27-year-old Marcus Murphy. <laughs> That's what you got right now. So, I mean, you got you you don't have a choice. You have to make uh, you have to address the position in some way, whether that's Chris Ivory or Marcus Murphy. You gotta do something. Paul's Demarco. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> true, true. I mean, Ford's the youngest person in the room. Yeah. And he wasn't on the he wasn't off the practice squad until the last few games of the season. So I just say. Uh, I think what gets a lot of people now, especially in the 716 mainly, is that you hear that name, LaShawn McCoy, and you think about all the dynamic runs he's had over the years. Yeah. He's not that player anymore. Mm-hmm. He's not. I mean, there were times last year when he wasn't open field, and if he was a 26-year-old McCoy, he would have been gone. And I, now he's not He's not that player anymore. I think there's a, a relative – I think the – the problem that a lot of people have is that McCoy hasn't had a major injury. So let's let's harken back to a player, in my opinion, and you'll probably disagree, but if I look at a comparable player who, after injury, wasn't the same, I go to Jamal Charles. Jamal Charles was a phenomenal quick twitch running back, right? Very quick. Injury, never the same afterwards. The difference is that there's a bookmark at the injury where everybody says, this is when it all changed for him. We don't have that with McCoy. Yeah. There's no there's no major catastrophic injury. This is what happens with running backs is, I'm, McCoy, I'm running back specifically like McCoy, is he depends so much on lateral movement, not necessarily on his vision. He waits and dances until something opens, and then he goes. Mm-hmm. Charles had better vision than McCoy did, but still had the same problems. But again, there was that bookmark of injury. I think this is just what this type of running back looks like at 31. I mean... I think that's what it is. This is, it, this is what you see. It's 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 that decline. What is the what is the comparison <clears throat> from Moneyball? He says, when you have to cut a player, he goes, would you rather take one bullet to the head or six to the chest? <laughs> he says, when, when you're getting cut, you know what I mean. Yeah. Charles was the bullet to the head. Yeah. You got you got like you said, you got that definite bookmark. What's going on? McCoy's has been little stuff over years, mm-hmm. over time. Soft tissue injuries all the time yeah. going on with him that it's eventually added up to the point where, okay, you had <laughs> three groin injuries, mm-hmm. five hamstring injuries, yeah. all this other stuff going on. While you haven't taken any contact injuries, all the little things have added up, and you're 31 years old. You don't have a lot of carries. You don't have a lot of touches as, an, as a 31-year-old back. However... Right. All of those self-inflicted wounds are starting to show. Well, and I think, you know, a lot of people in Buffalo look at Fred Jackson and say, well, look at Freddie. Look at how long he played. Jackson didn't come into the league until he was 27. Until he was 40. Well, he started in the league young, the older. Right? Yeah, he started 27, right? I think I think that's right, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so, I think there's something to be said. I think there's something to be said for that. But even Jackson at the end of his time in Buffalo, I mean... He became the guy that was there to keep your quarterback upright and pass pro. Yep. Like, that's the role that he had to take on. His job was to, I have to keep my quarterback safe. I have to be the, I have to be the safe. I'm not, I'm not the offense anymore. He was very good at that. And he was very good at that. I don't know if McCoy is good at that. I, I, don't, I don't really know if he can transition to a third down back like that. I'm not sure. And you're certainly not paying him like a third down back. No. The salary cap's not a problem. But you look at what else is out there and sure you could go and throw a bunch of picks at the wall for a ton of running backs or you can go sign Tevin Coleman who's had moderate touches and now we're going to go back to this talking about this since what May Yep. go back and look at Tevin Coleman who's had moderate touches with exception to last year then one other year where Devonta Freeman lost a few weeks and I mean is 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 he going to be somebody that carries and takes over your offense? No. But is he somebody who is consistently going to take up time for defensive coordinators? Yep. Is he somebody you have to pay attention to? Yep. And McCoy, I don't know if that is that player anymore. Since McCoy became a Bill, he has 30 touchdowns. Okay. In that same amount of time, Tevin Coleman is 29. Yeah. Splitting time. 
Yeah. I would take Tevin Coleman yesterday. I would have taken Coleman. I would have taken Coleman last year. We talked about this in May. I I know. You brought it up and you you sold me on it. 25, 26 years old, has half the carries and touches of a 26 year old back. He's been in the league. He understands pass pro. Playing with Matt Ryan, you gotta. You know, being in that offense down there. Well, not only that, but Tevin Coleman was drafted to be the starter. They drafted him and Freeman and said, let's just. See we'll have these two kids, and we'll see what happens. We'll let them battle it out. And Coleman won the job, but it, he got hurt at the very beginning of his rookie season. Freeman came in. And, I mean, the player that Freeman was two seasons ago. I mean, how can you not play him three seasons ago? How oh, my God. He was amazing. And Freeman's had some injury uh, problems. If, if, if you want a basis of what Coleman's going to get paid, mm-hmm. you've got to look at Freeman's Freeman. contract. Yeah. That's the lowest he's going to get yeah. going into Buffalo. But... I, don't, I feel like LaShawn McCoy's time here is, is basically is basically done. It wouldn't surprise me if he was cut um, or traded. I, but again, the trade thing, I mean, man, I, I just don't can. see. Yeah, it's. I think it might be a situation where they hold on to him because, I mean, you could still hold on to him, right? But um, you look to see if somebody loses someone along the way. And then, it's not a Kelvin Benjamin situation where he hurt your team being on it. Right, no. He's still... Yeah. This is just an option. Yeah, like, you don't have, have to cut player. him at all. Yeah, you can you, keep him. You can still have the two-headed monster of him and Ivory throughout the year. I just think that if that the two things are going to transpire, one, they're going to sign a free agent running back to replace him, or they're going to draft one. You sign Coleman, you open up a draft pick to maybe get somebody else. If you don't sign Coleman, then you're drafting McCoy's replacement, which he ain't going to like. Because you know you're going to hold on to McCoy while the rookie gets his feet wet. Right. So, what do you do? Yeah, it's... What do you do? It certainly impacts the room a little bit, right? It does. 